Hey, how's it going, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Zenvox channel. Today, I'm going to be building the high grade build wireless, the Transient Gundam Glacier. It's from the Side Story Hono Tri. For those of you that don't know about this series, the Wayne Gundam Zero Hono that I reviewed a long, long time ago, it came from the same series, just like this Transient Gundam. So, the Transient Gundam, we have two versions in high grade. One of them is the white and blue one, and this one right here is the purple and dark one. Personally, I like this glazier version better because overall the crystal piece all over the body just made it look super cool and I absolutely love this design than the original transient Gundam design. So anyway, I still remember there's like a comment that always told me, hey, do a transient Gundam, do a transient Gundam. I don't exactly remember who it was, but uh, here you go. This is the transient Gundam. But okay, so first let's look at the side right here, actions. So just quickly looking at it. And it also provides you a stand, just like the original Transient Gundam. And then at the other side, we have the description. And then we also have the details. All right, it's time for unboxing. So as usual, let's start looking at the instruction menu first. So first we can see the description of the Gampla and the Builder? I think it's called Builder. A Builder, Pilot, whatever you want to call. So if you want the details, just stop here and then you can just look at the details. So now let's just quickly open it. You can see that the material Gampla is the Transient Gundam and it also gave you the Team Lapis Lazuli, like a brief introduction. And then you got the crystal right here, the crystal introduction. And then we have the assemble guide, blah, blah, blah. Just quickly looking at it and then back here we have the weapon introduction and then we also have the color guide wait where's the one point technique oh wait they don't have it on the wait what oh they don't have the one point technique on this version anymore so first let's start looking at the e runner right here you can clearly see that this is the gen drive the, ch the chest part and then we have the Backpack connection, we have this one right here, side skirt, I think it's a side skirt. And we have the arms, we have the waist armor, we have the hands, and then we have the skirt armor? I think this one is skirt armor as well. And then the rest of the two pieces right here, I'm not exactly sure where it's from. So the C runner is the Transient Gundam runner, so you can see that the inner frame of the Transient Gundam, no matter is the hands or the legs, uh, we have the hands option and then we have the legs part, arms part, shoulders part, they, the, all the inner joint is basically all this runner. So we have a D runner right here, we have the waist part, the face, and then we have the, the, the big piece at the front skirt, I think it's the front, I think it's the front waist, and then we have the feet part at, like, right here. And then we have the action base. Well, actually, it's not the action base. It's just a standing base. We have two B runner. So let's take one of them. So first right here, you can see like a sort of like a small frame. So first we can see the spear, the spear handle, and then we can see some shoulders part. I assume this is the legs part. And then we have the, the gen drives, I think. Um, everything else uh, is very hard for me to guess. We have two A runners, so let's just take one of them and then just introduce it. So first you can see a lot of clear pieces. The clear pieces are located at the head, the wings, the backpack wings, um, and then the shoulders, the arms, and then you also have the knees, and then you also have the spear that have the clear piece on it. And then down, down here, I'm not exactly sure where it's, uh, where the parts came from. So overall, it will be just like this. And last, we have the poly caps and then just very small pieces with stickers. So I assume the color separation is going to be pretty good since there's not much stickers. So anyway, let's stop chatting. Let's go to the review first. Hey guys, welcome back to the Transient Gundam Glacier review. So this is the finishing of the Transient Gundam Glacier. So first, I would like to say that Personally, I think this finish looks absolutely fantastic and marvelous. Guys, the dark theme and the clear pieces were going along like extremely well. I like this design better than the original Transient Gundam. You know, I think this Gampla just one step away from being really good is they if they can change the clear piece numb marks to hidden numb marks because right now all the numb marks 
is pretty much at the like at the edge surface of the clear piece so it's you know it's pretty obvious so sometimes it might not feeling really comfortable and removing the marks on clear pieces is actually pretty annoying so personally i wished they can change it to hidden the marks but right now this is what we got so let's just stick with it as I said, this is a really nice finish. So at the beginning of the video, I would just say it like this. In speaking from the articulation and the finish, I think this is a must pick up if you just really like these kind of fancy build fighters uh, gunpla. So as usual, let's start with the head right here. So the head, in my opinion, it looks pretty small and actually it looks too small. So if they can make the head a little bit bigger, then I think the scale looks pretty comfortable because right now I really think the head is just too tiny okay so first you can see that a big clear antenna at the top of the head right here and then unfortunately this part right here is a sticker but fine it's just a very small piece of sticker i'll just deal with it so first let's look at the articulation so first moving up moving down it's pretty average and then you can turn 360 around as well because you know the head basically have no interruption so the head's movement is pretty free so now taking a look at the chest right here clear pieces all over the chest right here the colors on the chest is pretty nice you don't have to recolor anything so uh, this piece right here is a sticker this gray part right here is a sticker but the chest movement this time is actually really limited because if you look, take a look at the design at the back right here so the back skirt right here there's two pieces right here and then the wings and then the backpack wings here actually bump into the um back skirt pieces whenever you turn the upper body part so the articulation at the upper body right here is really limited the um optimistically i will probably say not even 45 is around like 20 degrees so the upper body movement is getting interrupted because of the design so the performance is not going to be good so take a look at the arms movement right here 360 nice lift up lift up is mm, the low average and then you have the bending the bending is pretty nice and then the whole arm you can you know just like just like the usual things you can rotate it around but this rotation right here is pretty difficult because the forearm piece right here will you know bump into the chest piece right here when you try to rotate the parts so just be careful don't break the parts and then the shoulders uh, there's an individual small joint right here so the shoulders got a little bit of movement you can also move to the front slightly as well so you know let's take a look at the waist armor right here so it got the same concept just like the Gundam Double O units. Don't really have a front skirt. So for those of you that don't know, Transient Gundam was based on the Gundam X share. So that's why they got like a pretty similar design concept. So Double O units for the X share, it don't really have a front skirt. So I wouldn't call that a front skirt as well because it's just too tiny. So this one right here, don't have a front skirt. And then we got a light purple piece right here. It's a sticker. It's fine. It's just a very small sticker. It's not a, it's not a big deal. So side skirt right here you can lift up there's some like small movements right here and the real problem i think is at the back skirt right here so you can see that there's four piece at the back skirt right here and they really interrupt your movement and sometimes they will often bump when you move the wings uh, or the upper body they will often bump into these kind of four pieces right here and these four pieces right here let's be honest it's not really stable sometimes they will consistently fall out so i think you should glue it Let's take a look at the legs articulation right here. So first, kicking to the front is pretty nice, 9 degrees. Kicking to the back, um, there's small interruptions. So I'll say that there's still some movement. Kicking to the side, not really because the side skirt um, cannot lift up that much. So it's not at 90 degrees, but it's close. And then the bending though, uh, the bending is actually pretty nice, pretty average. So the bending, I will say that is pretty good. And then for the feet down here, you can see that there's some movement right here because it's a ball joint so you can move it whenever you want and then we have a small piece right here that you can move for those of you who don't know that transient gundam uh it can either float or stand on the ground so you want the landing um that's fine you can just unfold the feet you can just unfold the feet and you can still make your transient gundam land but i prefer the floating one so that's why i close the feet 
and I just let it float on the base like this. So it's pretty free. If you want the floating mode, then just fold the feet. If you want to stand on the ground, then just unfold the feet. So it's pretty free. Next, we're going to check out the backpack right here. So first, you can see the GN drive is at the middle. So because, you know, it's a GN type MS. So of course, there's a GN drive. Let's take a look at the bottom wings movement right here. So first, you can see that um, because it's bumping into the back skirt piece right here. So the movement is actually not really good. It's around like 90 degrees, I would say that. But the bottom wings right here, we can see there's a ball joint here for you to adjust the position as well. And the clear piece, you can also move to adjust the wings as well. So overall, the movement at the bottom wings right here, um, I would say that for the base right here, the movement is pretty meh. So let's take a look at the top wings right here. First, you can see at the bottom of the top wings right here, we got two pieces here. So both of them, they got separate movements, so you can move them individually. They can move front and back, up and down as well. The clear piece right here is also adjustable and movable as well. The whole top wings can move around a little bit more than 90 degrees, uh, I will say that the top wings movement were pretty free because you know when you're moving the back, uh, when you're moving the backpack, the bottom wings right here, they will always bump into the back skirt. The top wings right here, they don't have any interruption. So the top wings movement is pretty free. The bottom one is so-so. Lastly, let's take a look at the accessories right here. So we got extra hands. So first, we got a leftover left hand, open hand, that without a hand armor. So, you know, you can still pose with this, but I don't know where can you get the hand armor. So... That might be a problem, but you know, it's sad that they don't provide us the hand armor. You can see they already attached the hand on the GM Partisan 2. So, you know, this is another option hand again. And this weapon right here, you can split it into two and then hold it individually. So it's actually pretty fun to play with. But the part that I really want to say that is the numb marks on the clear piece is actually quite annoying to deal with and quite hard to get rid of it so you know as you can see right here even though the clear piece looks amazing the numb marks is just really visible and is actually kind of like ruining your experience all right guys thank you guys for watching this video this will be the end of the video so i would just like to give my quick summary slash rating right now so uh speaking from the appearance it looks really amazing i absolutely love this finish but as I said, I wish they can change the clear piece num marks to hidden num marks so it's easier for us to deal with and also we don't have to see those very visible num marks. But for the articulation is you know it's quite average. It's, you know, if you're trying to pose with it, it's okay, but it's just you need to be careful. So if you're going for the articulation of this scalper, I would say that is a pretty pretty average it's like a meh but if you're just going if you're just buying it because of the finish then this is a must pick up anyway this is the end of the video thank you guys for watching this video make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button so you can get notified whenever i upload a new video and i'll see you guys in the next review goodbye